Perfect. All right. Um, welcome everybody to the info event uh, to our industry phase. We are very happy to see you all here. Uh, it will be a pleasure to present um, this industry industry phase we, we are going to uh, organize um, beginning in October. Um, yeah, so um, I'll just introduce myself briefly. My name is Richard Gauss. I'm um, studying medicine, but I've also studied computer science with focus machine learning at uh, TUM. And I'm um, in the industry department uh, for uh, two months now at TUM.ai. Yeah, and um, I also have a co-team lead, um, which is Philip. Hey, everyone. I'm Philip Wolters, and I'm studying robotics cognition intelligence at TUM um, in my final year. And together with Richard, I'm responsible for the industry projects at TUM AI. And I'm really excited to, to work together with you and, and our amazing industry partners on these yeah, interesting challenges. So also a warm welcome from my side. Yeah, so let's um, jump right in. Okay, um, the agenda will be, now we will um, tell you something about ourselves. Uh, who are we as Tum .ai? Um, What uh, What are we, What well, the industry projects. Uh, what are the industry projects? Um, all the specifics, we'll, we'll explain all the specifics to you. Then our uh, amazing partners will have the opportunity to introduce themselves in uh, 15 minutes presentations. Um, so we have Dyna Group and Veritas PR. We have Heim Capital and we have Precise. Um, yeah. And at the end, at 7 p.m., there will be ample opportunity to ask questions to our partners. Yeah, exactly. So let's begin. Uh, Tum.ai, who are we? First of all, we are a student initiatives. Um, for example, such as uh, Campus for Change, Academy Consult, Hyperloop. We are also a nonprofit organization, so an Eingetragener Verein e.V. And um, our specific focus is AI technology and not specifically the, re the research side of things, which is, uh, which, which is very strongly represented in uh, the, AI, the AI, AI community. Um, but we focus on the uh, real-world applications that AI can have. Now, our core purpose and mission, uh, our core mission is to connect students and all, all relevant stakeholders from industry, from academia, and from business, uh, from different domains to facilitate the application of AI in different domains and in this way drive and create positive so social impact. Our main instrument for doing this are interdisciplinary projects, um, but we also have um, diff other things which we'll talk about um, uh, next. The overall vision is that we empower um, people to, to use AI technology to, to uh, lower the entry barrier to AI so, so AI can, use, can be used in all domains and um, in, in um, essentially uh, realize um, positive um, potential. Um, so for, as an example, I myself am from the medical domain and I can tell you that um, um, the cooperation is not very intense between computer scientists and doctors. And um, there's still a lot of unrealized potential in uh, the medical domain for AI. And this is the kind of potential we want to realize and unfold at tone.ai. So here's the brief summary of us. We have, um, as of now, 75, more than 75 active members. We have uh, quite a strong social media outrage, outreach uh, with more than 1,100 1, LinkedIn followers. We, have, uh, we combine students from more than 15 different majors. We receive more than 100 applications per semester. Uh, most of our students have a tech background, for instance, from engineering or computer science, and um, the majority of our members are graduate students. So to give you a, 
an example of what we do. Um, I'll talk about uh, Tomb.ai GPT-3 Makeathon next, um, which we organized in April of this year. Now, um, GPT-3, you may have heard of it already if you are um, familiar with, um, if, you, if you are up to date with AI technology, um, maybe you've even worked with it yourself. It's one of the largest uh, language models developed so far. It can, uh, it can write dialogues, it can, uh, can uh, continue stories and uh, write blog posts and uh, such things. Now, um, it was developed by OpenAI, which is a company um, co-founded by Elon Musk. And um, as of yet, as of now, there's, it's not really clear how GPT-3 can be used for real-world applications. And the goal of our Makerthon was to, to um, find out exactly this by bringing together, by, by, by giving students access to GPT-3 and letting them find out what use cases then they can come up with for this um, very powerful model. Now, um, in the end, we had, I'm sorry, uh, cold. Um, in the end, we had Microsoft, um, Cherry Ventures, Applied AI, for instance. We had eight challenge hosts, for instance, the, the, the Bayerische Rundfunk, um, Siemens, Luminovo, and many more. And to their model. Now, um, before... Okay, now let's um, continue with our industry projects. Now, the purpose of the industry projects is uh, to the possibility to apply their AI skills to I'm sorry. Um looks like my internet failed me this point we talked about where our industry projects now the purpose of our industry projects is to um, give students the possibility to apply their ai skills to real world problems now, um, if you have learned about machine learning, you know that each AR, AI journey starts with this. This is the Iris Flower dataset. It is a, um, a dataset that contains this, um, different variables like sepal length, sepal width, so the shapes of the flower leaves for different species of flowers. And um, it's often used in machine learning education to, so, that, so that students can build models on this. Um, as you can see from this graphic on the right already, um, this problem, this machine learning problem is not very difficult to solve because they, the classes are very uh, easy to separate. And um, this is one example for a toy problem in machine learning. Another would be, for instance, the um, housing price data set and um, toy problems in, in machine learning education have considerable benefits. They have strong and obvious associations between their features and their, their labels. So they are very easy to solve and in this way they ca carry great educational value. Now, um, of course, the drawback is that toy problems um, are not as complex as real world problems. Um, and therefore, our goal is to enable students to apply their AI skills to, to these complex real-world industry problems. 
which are not comparable to typically um, encountered uh, toy problems. Yeah. So what are um, exactly your benefits in this? Firstly, we provide a great learning environment uh, through a close mentorship from our side, from the side of Tum.ai and from partner side. Secondly, you um, have the opportunity to learn effective AI project management. So if you've ever conducted an AI project, you know that um, much of it is trial and error, and there are proven ways to make this process as effective as possible, this process of trial and error, and we'll um, provide you with teaching how to do this. Uh, you can also grow your coding skills, obviously, and play with new ideas as we have no blueprint solutions for any of those problems, of those challenges um, by our partners that we offer. You can, of course, work in interdisciplinary teams and challenge your thinking. So for instance, if you're working in a medical project, um, as a computer scientist, you will work with doctors and have the possibility to assume their uh, point of view. And lastly, of course, you build your you build a network with um, established industry leaders, and um, there is the real possibility that you may get a um, working student position at um, some of our partners after the project phase. Okay, but most importantly, of course, you make an impact. You're not simply um, well, the, the hard gained uh, AI skills that you have uh, through, through, um, through education at the TUM or anywhere else, um, you can apply to real world problems and make a real impact. So for instance, we'll um, have one par partner, Precise, um, who, who will um, present a, a um, problem where you can reduce the returns from online clothes shopping uh, websites, for instance, Zalando, and thus uh, protect environmental resources. So there's very real impact to be made here. Okay, so let's get to the specifics next. Our industry projects um, go over eight weeks. And uh, in this course, you work in a team of four to six students. The workload is between 15 to 20 hours per week, and um, the complete projects will be fully remote. Now, um, we are still in discussion with some partners if we uh, want to organize some of the events um, in person, but um, even if we do so, you will have the opportunity to join them remotely. So even if you are not in Munich, if you are not in Germany, you can uh, participate in these, problem, in these projects. Um, th that is no problem. What we also provide you with is a um, very close guidance by us as Tum.ai and our partners. There will be weekly meetings. We'll organize also expert lectures for you on AI and the project management. And we'll uh, provide you with a project structure and specific work milestones that you can uh, work towards. Okay, here's a uh, timeline of the project phase. And at the beginning, at the beginning of um, October, there will be our kickoff. Um, then there will be weekly uh, meetings. So um, there will be bi-weekly bi -weekly, um, meetings with the mentors from partner side. Each of our partners will provide you with a mentor. Um, and then, and then um, there will be alter alternatingly with that. There will be um, our milestone meetings where you present your work progress to the other teams because we'll have three teams that work in parallel. So you will present um, your work to the other teams. And there will also be an expert lecture that we will organize for you. And um, finally, this will lead to the final event on um, November 29th. Uh, well, th there will be a public presentation of the uh, final results and um, a small competition and a uh, award ceremony uh, after the jury has decided. Yeah. Okay, so this is it um, for from our side. 
Um, there will be, as, as uh, we all already said, ample opportunity to ask questions at 7 p.m. after all the um, partner presentations. And now I'll uh, leave the, the word to our first partner, Dyna Group and Viritas PR. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks for having us, Richard. Thanks a lot. My name is Michael Kappel. I'm the uh, CEO of Dyna Group Information Technologies. Um, we're based in uh, Ottobrunn, close to Munich. And we, what we do is, uh, in first place, do software development. Uh, that's web app, building web applications um, and, and mobile applications for, for, for industry. Most of our clients are, are based close to Munich or in Munich. Um, what we do further is uh, consulting in digitalization um, and, and help our customers to, to get this process done. And that's not very easy as we, as we see all of us. Um, that's the first point. Um, we're to doing this uh, project together, um, the, the, the um, uh, smart source, uh, uh, smart content uh, creation uh, project we're doing together with uh, Veritas uh, PR. And I'd like to pass the word on to David Shim uh, so that he can do a little presentation from, from his side, from his company. Yeah, thank you, Michael. Um, I'm David Schim, uh, founder and general manager of Veritas Populations. Uh, we do uh, communication strategies, PR uh, for B2B companies uh, for more than 10 years. Um, I'm in business for more than 25 years now, and uh, uh, communication is our uh, daily activity. And uh, more and more digitalization is coming into the business. So uh, we joined uh, uh, Dyna Group to, to do some project on this. And so uh, together we are uh, presenting now uh, our ideas and our plans uh, doing communication tools so, um, with uh, the help of AI. Yes, I'll, I'll just get uh, started. First of all, what, what exactly it is the project is, is all about. Um, what we plan on, on, on doing is to, to get an API application programmable interface established, um, which, um, which uh, has the possibility to, to um, to rewrite the content. Um, we, we, we all have the problem. So let's start with, with the use case. We all have the problem that we need a lot of time to, to create content. What, what do we do? We research, we do the process, we finalize uh, content. And that's, that takes a lot of time, valuable time. And not every one of us is, is really capable of, of, of uh, doing good text and, and, and doing good content. So this is, this is the approach, actually, what, what we're aiming at and what, what we're going for, to build an API that can um, take a, a source content and rewrite this source content to a, to a reasonable to, to an excellent uh, uh, target. This is, this, is, this is the goal of the project. David? Yeah. And uh, coming from this, uh, from, from our learnings for the last uh, uh, 10 and 20 years, uh, is uh, getting content uh, together is becoming what it was and is becoming more and more important and uh, um, making it easier nowadays with tools that are based on AI um, is now possible and we are seeing uh, lots of uh, developments there. Uh, we already see some, some, of, uh, some solutions that do uh, paraphrasing, but actually they're really in the basics. Uh, and uh, that's why we've uh, initiated this project. Uh, we're working on this now for about, about more than one and a half years. Uh, we, we were uh, overseeing the markets, what's, what's going on the last uh, month. And, and uh, may, maybe some of you also have seen there are lots of developments in this area, NLP, NLG, is, is uh, the, currently the, the, the biggest uh, development uh, in AI, in AI car. And uh, so we want to see and want to use the, the opportunities and the tools that are currently out there uh, to bring together and uh, make a solution uh, that uh, yeah, gives us the possibility uh, to generate uh, really um, 
reliable texts out of existing texts and uh, using this uh, with open source technologies uh, and, and, and giving it back uh, to open source uh, afterwards. This is our goal. And we see, um, as I said, a uh, lot of uh, tools that are out there and, and uh, great solutions, smaller solutions. And uh, what we really want to do, we want to see what's, what's out there on the market and, and want to try in this project for the next 80 weeks then, uh, how we can bring them together uh, into an API um, to, to, to get the best solution uh, out of many existing ones. And uh, yeah, we hope to see, um, to, we, want, we will get input from, from our side, but we've already, uh, uh, found out and, and, and uh, tested already, uh, but also your ideas and, and, and your, what you've learned in your studies in the past can also influence uh, or should and will, of course, uh, influence the, the, the project and, and the, the tool that should be out there uh, after the first weeks in a, in a, in a draft uh, where we can uh, rely on and, and build on the next steps. That's, that's our plan. That should be it. Maybe one, one final word from my side at, at this point of time. Um, I think it's, it's all about combining technologies, combining existing technologies, using these, using these very actively. Um, um, we have a lot of open source and there's every day there's new open, open source projects, frameworks, libraries uh, coming to the market and to, to get, get a good picture of that, to research that and to, to take those parts that we need to get the best or the closest to this solution. That's what we're really aiming at. And, and that's what we're going for in this project. Right. And uh, having this idea uh, in mind that, that everybody can, can be uh, easy writing uh, a text, this is our idea. So that, that we have the opportunity to, to research uh, text uh, in the internet or other sources and bringing them together and letting the AI uh, IP uh, writing, rewriting a text, uh, shortening it, or, or uh, yeah, bring it in another form and in a form uh, which the, the, the potential readers will like. So um, this gives several opportunities. Uh, we do not want to uh, uh, substitute uh, any editor. We, we just want to give opportunities to, to bring, to generate much more content. And uh, this is possible now, this is possible with, with uh, today's tools and uh, seeing opportunities with tomorrow's tools uh, in this uh, setup, uh, we will have a great opportunity to, to, to generate, to, to letting people generating um, texts and content that uh, in the past never had the chance to do this uh, because they were not able to, or they didn't have time for this. And uh, so, so, um, we have the tools now and we want to bring them together and uh, yeah, together with you and, and your help and, and our, our uh, uh, yeah, past developments, uh, we are, we are uh, sure that we can create uh, a very good uh, basic tool and tool set uh, from which we can yeah, develop further uh, tools in the, in the future. Great, That's thank it. you. Great, sounds like an awesome project. And um, there will be opportunity to ask any question you have at the end at um, 7 p.m. Um, now we would just continue to our second partner, Heimkapital. Hi, thank you, Richard. Um, I'm sorry, Christoph. Um, we I can hear you only very um, badly. I will try to turn my camera off. Maybe the connection will be better then. Uh, our project proposal. Um, hello. Is it better now? Yes, it's better. Much better now. 
Perfect. Okay, can you see the screen? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so I'm Chris. Uh, I'm a data scientist at Heimkapital. I'm building up the data science team there. We are a young startup. I will know about the company in a, in a bit. Um, my background is in uh, private equity. I've been working um, the past five years before I joined uh, Heimkapital uh, for a private equity firm, and I worked on automating and making the investment process better. Uh, by using machine learning and data science to, you know, um, reevaluate uh, re and improve the investment process. Um, at Heim Capital, so what the company does is uh, we are buying real estate, but we are not just buying any real estate. What we are offering to our customers is that we allow um, uh, people in Germany who have most of their wealth uh, tied up in their homes in the real estate to um, access this wealth and turning or making it liquid by receiving cash. Um, in Germany, there's the case that many people are asset rich and cash poor and um, mortgages are usually not available for older people or people don't want to take on more debt. But if they want to access their wealth, um, they, they need to sell a uh, part of their home and that's what we are doing. So we are acquiring up to 50% um, of the ownership of our customers' homes, uh, providing fast liquidity while paying market prices. Um, and the owner keeps the lifelong right of use um, and uh, pays something like rent to us. In addition to that, we provide financial support for um, renovation projects, like putting solar panels on the roof. Um, Heim Capital is Munich-based. We are a young team. Everyone is uh, below 35. Uh, we are growing fast. Uh, we have been investing um, in 10 to 15 uh, new opportunities every month in the last weeks. Um, and we are very data driven. So our goal is to really automate the, the, the investment process and to find the best investment opportunities in Germany using machine learning and artificial intelligence. The project that we want to work on with you together is uh, to automate the real estate valuation process. Um, the challenge here is to come up with a model or with models that can accurately price new investment opportunities um, just based on data. Um, and we want to find the best or most promising locations in Germany for our investments. The approach that uh, we want to take is uh, we want to collect information about uh, real estate prices from the internet, then combine this data with data that we have already um, in our database, geospatial data, satellite imagery, and statistics about all kind of other things like um, employment rates in a certain region, um, the uh, distance to the next supermarket, to the next school to evaluate how attractive a certain location is. And um, the goal is then to train a um, model that can estimate, estimate the prices for new locations uh, for which we don't, do not have any price information. The challenge here is that um, this is a complex problem. We are working with a wealth of data sources. We use geospatial data, satellite imagery, the scraped data from the internet. And um, based on our experience, we, we, we learned that we need to build many different types of models because every model has a different strength. And um, uh, we, we can only come to a good solution if we combine um, models with a different strength to come up with a good ensemble of models. And um, also it's, it's, it's a very difficult problem to, to solve. And it also has a really high business impact because we need a very accurate pricing since if we underprice, so if our price is too low, we are not going to win the investment. So the, our customer is going to go to a competitor because he gets a better price for his real estate there. And if we pay too much, then we are losing money or having bad returns. So um, it's going to be very challenging to strike the right balance in pricing the real estate. Um, yeah, I hope that 
um, some of you uh, find this challenge interesting to work with different types of models, to work with different type of uh, data, so, uh, data types, uh, imagery, um, geospatial data, or just numeric data. Um, yeah, and we would love to uh, welcome you in the Heim Capital team and work with you together. Great. Chris, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Okay, we have one last partner, Precise, and we're excited to see their project challenge. All right, so thanks very much, guys. Just before we start and we share the screen, I'm gonna ask you if we are very well audible, so if you can hear as well. Yes, perfectly. Okay, awesome. So the next question I have for you is, can you actually see our screen? We can see it, yes. Awesome, then let's start. So thanks very much for the invitation. It's an honor to actually participate at uh, the TUM AI. Um, so who are we actually? So we're called Precise AI. Um, we are also a fairly young startup. And uh, what we do in an essence is we help people who shop online for clothing to order the right size and just return less. And I included a little bit of statistics below. So we are fairly young, but we already have quite some tractions. We have over 41 million sizes recommended, saved um, thousands of um, kilograms of CO2. We have a lot of people scanned, despite people saying that nobody would stand in front of the camera back in the days when we started. Um, so a little bit about the team actually, and who are you, um, Let's just see if you can switch the slide. Who are you talking to actually? Who are you listening to right now? So I'm Tommy. I'm one of the founder team, I'm also in the role of the CTO. We founded Precise roughly two and a half years ago with Leon and Aves. And um, currently, yeah, we have over 37 people from 17 countries. Um, really good track record. Uh, we have some really interesting advisors that help us on our mission to help people um, yeah, make the shopping experience uh, more pleasant and yeah, have an environmental impact, which you will learn about in a bit. Um, so some people from the industry, from CNA, Google Boss, Plug and Play is one of our investors. Um, and actually, let me tell you a little bit about what problem we're even solving, because I mentioned who are we helping, um, of course, with our product. But the problem is that every second product um, in Europe is being returned and uh, half of the reasons for this has to do something with poor fit or wrong size in online shopping for clothing. And actually even a large part of the users, something we didn't know about, uh, doesn't even buy because of size uncertainty. This was a very interesting finding for us that we figured later on. And how do we actually help people uh, return less and find the right size? So we have developed technology that allows you to stand in front of your smartphone, just a regular smartphone, normal camera, rotate once, follow the instructions, of course, put in some uh, answers of basic questions and or just go through a slightly longer um, series of questions. And then at the end comes out your size for every product that you're viewing on all supported shops in our network. And that basically helps you um, return less. So how does it actually look like? So usually we have different types of integration. Usually we are on any uh, e-commerce fashion shop. We are this button on the product detail page that is find your size. And then you click it and then you follow the instructions. Um, but here I have one example also from a native application for a very well-known brand that we're integrated with. So here a user is just looking at the product, then they open up the size selection and they click on find my size and then they open our application. So they type in um, some basic um, input information. And then, um, yeah, after that, they will select how do they like their clothing? So do you like it like super tight or is it like standard or maybe a bit looser? And then after that, you have the choice to do a video scan or answer some more questions. So in this case, you do a video scan. So you align the camera, 
you have to wear just normal clothing. It doesn't have to be, you don't have to be naked or you don't have to wear like yoga pants or anything like that. We do give you the instructions, obviously, to not wear like a super baggy hoodie or jacket. And then, yeah, you basically come back, pick up the phone. We calculate your body measurements. We reconstruct actually the body. So um, we are um, participated in a um, challenge with top six selected solutions worldwide. And we came number one. We were 55% more accurate than the second solution from ESA. Um, so you get your size recommendation at the end, and you can actually directly proceed here to the shopping cart. Okay, so let's skip this and actually tell you. So what does this lead to? This leads to people being more certain what size they should order. So they buy, they're more likely to buy, they buy more and they return less, which is, in my opinion, the greatest part about a product because every single return prevented means 500 grams less CO2 for the environment. We have a lot of brands on board. And now I'm gonna tell you before I set up, this is the setup for the challenge that we are gonna show you. I'm gonna tell you a bit about how this engine works because you're gonna to need to know this. So as I said, video scan or some more questions about your body. We actually reconstruct the geometry of your body, but in the end, actually body measurements come out. Um, we use product data like fit material, sizing charts, we produce size recommendations, but we also use transactional data, which is what was ordered in what size and what was returned. And this allows the system to continuously learn, which um, I think is the most amazing, amazing aspect about Precise. And now, um, actually, how does that work? So you get, for example, one user, which for us is just some long ID. We don't collect um, any user data. The videos are also deleted um, after the point of inference. So for us, it's just a long ID. And then let's say that ID um, comes out with body measurements that are similar to Adam on the right. And then uh, for some reason, the recommendation here ended up XL. And then the person returned this with a fit review that it was too large. And then in the next iteration of the system, the system adjusts based on, of course, more than one user. Um, and the next time around for a similar user with same or similar body, the recommendation would be adjusted. Now, what about the challenge? So the challenge is actually very related to this. So we thought that Tomb AI is such a great initiative, honestly, that we think that we should allow um, a team that is formed by Tomb AI to compete with our size recommendation solution. Um, and actually, how are we going to do that? So the goal is given apparel information about the products, shopper info and user info and this transactional data to predict basically the size that a user or a shop visitor would buy. And obviously, even better, a size that a user or a shop visitor would buy and keep. Okay. And the impact that you have is by Creating a better system, every prevented return is 500 grams of CO2 saved. That's repackaging, transport cost, parts of the products being destroyed, a lot of stuff involved there, and 30 minutes saved on average. That's many minutes per return, both from the shopper and from the people processing, which is crazy when you sum it up. Um, and the data set that we will provide is a selected data set from two online shops that we talked with. Uh, to form this challenge, it consists of 140,000 orders, about 50,000 precise users, and 500,000 shoppers, 20,000 unique products, and about 2 million transactions. And a bit more detail, actually, what is inside that, because that's just the outline of the data set. So we have kind of three different parts. We have the product information, we have the user information, and the transactional events. On the product information, you get sizing charts, you get product images, you get product text descriptions, and you get the whole product detail page of the product scraped as raw HTML. And you also get on top of that structured product information directly from our database uh, and from the Google Analytics data layer, which is very easy to translate and parse. On the user side, you get what you saw through the user journey. So age, weight, gender, height, fit preference, you get body measurements, you get subjective body shape information, and you get 
latent body shape vectors directly from our measurement extraction pipeline. There is a possibility to also get 3D geometry in a specialized format if you get that far. And for the transactional events, you get order placed events. So one order could consist of multiple products. Each product that is ordered within that order uh, with its respective size and ID of the product and actually add to cart events for products in certain size for users, which is also very predictive, as well as which products from the ones that were ordered in a certain size were returned. So very, very rich data set, a lot of modalities to work with. So personally, we're super excited actually at Precise to see what the um, TUM AI team will do with this data. And we're gonna also help you and supervise you uh, regularly. Um, and now, of course, I said a lot and yeah, one does not simply end a presentation without questions. So feel free guys to ask anything that comes to your mind. We're more than happy to provide answers. So thanks very much. Thank you, Precise, and especially uh, Thomas Love for presenting this interesting challenge. Um, so I'm really looking forward to our collaboration and yeah, very cool project from a young and ambitious startup. And with this, we have heard all three presentations and got three uh, different amazing projects. So now it's up to you. Um, on which challenge do you want to work? Um, I will now show quickly a QR code, which leads to our application form. So let me just share my screen. Or I think you have to end your screen share that, that I can overtake. All right, basically now you should be able to see our QR code and um, yeah, you can scan the code, fill out the information regarding your motivation and skill levels. Um, but yeah, as we said earlier, you don't have to be an expert. Uh, we want to give everybody a chance to getting to know real world AI experience. And aside from, from our university toy problems, um, and we also give you guidance in, in expert lectures and, and milestone meetings. So as a basic note, um, you should have some programming skills and, and theoretic AI or domain knowledge um, to participate uh, effectively. But um, the how good you are, it's it's um, you. Yeah, you can also learn um, on the job and and get real world experience. So now we we and and our partners are happy to to ask uh, answer your questions. Just one quick note, I'll excuse myself um, because I need to go to another meeting. Um, great presentations. I'm looking, we are very much looking forward to your applications. Um, very much looking forward to the industry phase. Um, great, great to have all you, all, all of you here. Thank you, bye. Thank you, Richard. All right, now let's take a look at the chat. Um, there are also already some questions. So what level of coding and particular ML experience is required? So as I said, um, it's it's better if you have a um, basic understanding of, of um, machine learning and uh, the requirements in the, in the projects and programming skills, but you don't have to be on an expert level. As we say, you, we want to give you with your theoretic AI skills, um, for example, an interesting challenge and, and project to develop your skills. Um, then we have, will there be multiple teams per industry partner? So right now we are planning with one team uh, per industry partner, so four to six people. But if there are a lot of people um, or a lot of people interested in, in one project, we, we may increase the team size, but for now it's uh, four to, uh, six people. Yeah, what are typical roles in such a team? So basically, we don't have dedicated roles such as, or maybe just the, the normal um, yeah, group project roles, like we will have a team leader. And regarding the projects, there will be yeah, working packages regarding more the data side of the, of the challenge and the model side. So you can yeah, 
split up with your team and, and work on different parts of the pipeline. Yeah, so the, the application form, you can scan the QR code, but also we will send out an, an email again afterwards uh, where you can just apply on the link, um, which will be provided. Yeah, a link will be shared. Yeah, I think somebody mentioned there's an error in the form. I will check that afterwards and uh, update the form so every information should be should be fine then in that. Yeah, and also in the form, you can um, just check um, several projects um, if you're interested in, in, for example, two of, of our projects, and then we will match accordingly to um, how many people want want in those projects and what, what the experience is. And is it possible to participate with less than 15 hours? Um, in general, yes. But if we have like, or at least we we, we wanted um, the participants to work with 15 to 20 hours. And if we have um, teammates which which are willing to work um, more more than that, or um, yeah, more than um, the people with uh, less than 15 hours, um, those will be. Um, favorite yeah all right i think that's for the questions in the chat um i will be available for i think 20 minutes uh, or longer if you have um, additional questions but you can also shoot a shoot a message to our email addresses um, which will also be present in the in the form. And yeah, with that, uh, thank you much. Thank you very much. Um, also from from for our um, partners, um, very welcome, uh, warm welcome. And also, yeah, thanks for listening in. And we are happy if you apply for for our projects. And we are looking forward to working with you. Thank you a lot for the opportunity to present. Yeah, thank you also from my side and uh, look forward to getting uh, feedback from you and uh, yeah, being in touch for the kickoff meeting then. <laughs>